18 verses 14 to 35. Matthew 18 verses 14 to 35. Write that down. We're going to look at it because he talks about forgiveness. Now, here's one thing I want you to understand what our Lord Jesus Christ teaches about forgiveness. He didn't emphasize this, and I've met many people who don't emphasize this and may give a misleading understanding picture of what it means to forgive. <clears throat> there, there's forgiveness on two levels. Follow with me, and I'm asking the Holy Spirit to save me from error and stammering and grant me clarity of thought to glorify Jesus Christ and not misinterpret Scripture and mislead you. Okay. There are... <clears throat> How do I say this? There is not two types of forgiveness or two layers, of, but two levels. There is the forgiveness that takes place within you, where within you, you ask the Lord Jesus to heal your heart, to forgive that offense, release you from it so you don't come into bondage to it, be enslaved by it, ensnared by it, and have bitterness and hatred because of it. But then there's that level of forgiveness where it's external, right? Where you forgive the person who's committed the offense. Now, when you listen to the sermon, he's going to focus on that level of forgiveness that's internal within you to be released by that bitterness or that hatred because of that offense. So you don't be ensnared by it, enslaved to it, and it consumes you and destroys your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ <clears throat> and robs you of your peace. The sermon will focus on that, okay? So I want you to listen to it. But then there's that level of forgiveness where it's not simply forgiving someone in your heart so you're released, right, from <clears throat> any hatred and bitterness that may spring up and enslave and ensnare you, right? But then there's the forgiveness that's external where you forgive that person and extend forgiveness to that person and verbalize that forgiveness to that person. Are you with me there? Because I want to finish the thought, complete the thought, complete the picture, because in my opinion... It was incomplete. I'm going to shock you when I say this because I'm going to prove it from the words of our God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm going to prove it from the very parable he quoted. From the very parable he quoted. You are not to forgive someone verbally that hasn't asked for your forgiveness. Let me repeat this again. It is one thing to forgive someone internally within yourself, within your heart, within your mind, within your soul, so that you can be healed of any bitterness or hatred that may spring up and ensnare you. It's another thing to verbalize your forgiveness to that person who's committed that offense against you. The Lord Jesus says you do not extend forgiveness verbally to the person who doesn't ask for your forgiveness. The condition of verbalizing your forgiveness to the person that's offended you is if that person seeks your forgiveness and asks that you forgive them. Can I prove that to you? What are you rushing me to give you scripture? If you want to be patient, I'll give you scripture. I'm going to use the very parable that our Lord Jesus used. Now, I'm going to be using the new english translation okay matthew 18 14 to 35 i'm just going to use the new english translation because it has some notes that help us understand the currency the amount of debt how astronomical the debt was between the servant and the king right but before i do that again pray for me the holy spirit loosens my tongue to speak clearly and passionately and bless you that anoints the sound of my voice to be pleasing to your ears for the glory of Jesus Christ. Let me just read to you the part that he focused on, Matthew 18, 21. Let me read it to you. Matthew 18, 21, 22. Ready? 
Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how many times must I forgive my brother who sins against me? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, I tell you, but 77 times or 70 times seven. Okay. Do you hear what, what Peter said? How many times should I forgive my brother? Seven times? The Lord Jesus says 70 times seven. In other words, it's simply an expression meaning that you should always be willing and ready and able to forgive your brother who sins against you. Now, if I stop there, if I stop there, I don't read what comes before and after. After it. The impression is you are to extend forgiveness verbally to that brother or sister that's offended you, even if he or she doesn't ask for your forgiveness. No, that's wrong. That's reading it out of context. Are you ready? That's reading it out of context. That's not what the Lord Jesus meant. If I just read Matthew 18, 21, 22, that's all I read. The impression, if I just read 21, 22, the impression is I am to extend forgiveness verbally to the person offended me by saying, look, I forgive you. Even if he or she doesn't seek forgiveness from me, from me or you, the person offended. That's actually taking it out of context. Now, let me give you the contextual meaning. Let's start at 14, Matthew 18, 14 to 20, and then we're going to understand Peter's point. Matthew 18, 14 to 20. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that one of these little ones be lost. Now watch. If your brother sins, go and show him his fault when the two of you are alone. If he listens to you, you have regained your brother. See, if he listens to you, Meaning he admits he has wronged you, he sinned against you, and acknowledges his sin, then you've gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others with you, so that the testimony of two or three witnesses ever every matter may be established. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. If he refuses to listen to the church, treat him like a Gentile or tax collector. Discipline him, disfellowship him, throw him out of the church. I tell you the truth, whatever you bind on earth will have been bound in heaven, and whatever you release on earth will have, release, will have been released in heaven. Again, I tell you the truth, if two of you on earth agree about whatever you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three are assembled in my name, I am there among them. Then Peter says, verse 21, then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how many times must I forgive my brother who sins against me? As many as seven times. Did you guys understand? The immediate context? What's the context? If a brother sins against you or a sister sins against you, go and confront that brother and sister, make them aware of their offense, and if they listen and acknowledge their sin and repent, then you have won your brother, you are to forgive. If they refuse, bring two or three other witnesses. And if they still refuse, then bring it before the church and if they still refuse to accept responsibility and accept correction and acknowledge and confess their sin, the church is to treat them as an unbeliever and throw them out of fellowship from the church. You see now? You understand that? Before I move on to the next part. Is that clear? As it sink in? Because now I'm going to read the rest of it, the parable that our Lord Jesus gives. Now let's read Matthew 18, 21 to 35, and we're going to read the parable. Now let's read the context. Pay careful attention because there's a lot of meat, and I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to save me from error, illuminate us to unpack the meat for the glory of Jesus. Now let's read. Again, 21, Peter. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how many times must I forgive my brother who sins against me? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, I tell you, but 77 times. Another reading, 70 times seven. Now, the parable. For this reason, see, now I understand the Lord Jesus is going to give a par parable illustrating forgiveness. And if you're unwilling to forgive the repentant sinner. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his slaves. As he began settling his accounts, a man who owed 10,000 talents, and I'll come back and read the note from the NET to tell you how much 10,000 talents 
actually is. So a man owed 10,000 talents to the king. A servant owed 10,000 talents to the king. And he was brought to him. Because he was not able to repay, to repay it, the Lord ordered him to be sold along with his wife, children, and whatever he possessed and repayment to be made. Now watch. Did you catch it? What did the king say to do? Throw him in prison. Throw his wife in prison with him and his children until he repays it. He didn't forgive him. He punished him. Deservedly so. Right? But now watch. Yeah, now watch here. Then the slave threw himself to the crown before him saying, Be patient with me and I will pray you everything. The Lord had compassion on that slave and released him and forgave him the debt. When did the king forgive him? When he asked for forgiveness. Did you catch it? When did he forgive him? When he asked. When he didn't ask, what did the king do? Imprison him. Threw him in prison, him and his family. And I'm going to unpack this step by step. But when he asked for forgiveness and pleaded for mercy and threw himself at his feet, then the king showed him mercy. You with me there? Let's continue. Be patient with me and I will repay you everything. The Lord had compassion on that slave and released him and forgave him the debt. Not only will I be patient with you, I'll even cancel your debt. You owe me nothing. Go ahead. You're free. Now watch. After he went out, the same slave found one of his fellow slaves who owed him 100 silver coins, peanuts in comparison to what he owed. He owed the king 10,000 talents, whereas his fellow servant only owed him 100 silver coins, peanuts, in light of his astronomical debt that he owed to the king, which was humanly impossible for him to pay. So he grabbed him by the throat and started to choke him, saying, pay back what you owe me. Then his fellow slave threw himself down and begged him, just like he did for the king, his servant does for him. So the servant begs him like he begged the king. Watch here. Be patient with me and I'll repay you. But he refused. Instead, he went out and threw him in prison until he repaid the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were very upset and went and told their Lord everything that had taken place. Now watch what the Lord says. Then his Lord called the first servant and said to him, evil slave, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. You see, it's conditional. When did he forgive him? When he asked and begged for forgiveness. Should you not have shown mercy to your fellow slave, just as I showed it to you? And in anger, his Lord turned him over to the prison guards to torture him until he paid all he owed. Again, watch the key. Here it goes. I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Notice forgiveness was conditional. It was conditioned on the man asking to be forgiven. Is it sinking in now? Let me finish it. 35. So also my heavenly father will do to you if each of you does not forgive your brother from your heart. So in the parable, the king is God the father. And their unrighteous servant is someone who professes to be a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ. But did you catch it? So I think you didn't catch it. And this is where people are wrong when they only give you part of the picture and not the full picture. Are you supposed to forgive someone who's offended you within your heart? Yes. Ask the Lord Jesus to heal your heart, to forgive and release that person. Why? For your benefit. Because you don't want that offense to eat you up so that bitterness and hatred springs up and enslaves and ensnares you to that bitterness and hatred, robbing you of your peace and joy with the Lord and with others. So the forgiveness internally is for your health. But extending forgiveness verbally to the one who offends you is conditioned on that person asking and seeking for it. If they don't, you are under no obligation to tell that person, I forgive you. You forgive in your heart, but you don't need to tell them that until he or she asks for forgiveness. 
right? Let me now prove it to you from another saying of the Lord Jesus Christ. Luke 17, verses 3 to 4. So I wanted to complete the picture. Luke 17, 3 to 4. Yes, Cynthia. Why? For your healing, so that you don't become ensnared, enslaved to that hatred and bitterness. The reason why you forgive within yourself, for you to be freed, for you to be protected, for you to save yourself from being enslaved to bitterness and hatred will eat you up and hinder you from walking in peace with the Lord and others. Now, Luke 17, verses 3 to 4. Let me prove it to you now. And notice what Jesus goes on to say. Luke 17, verses 3 to 4. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. Well, if he doesn't forgive, repent. You don't forgive him. Meaning you don't extend forgiveness to him verbally. Say, I forgive you. And if he sins against you seven times a day, and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. You see it's conditional again? You see I'm not making it up? Here, Luke 17, 3 to 4. Let's look at it again. Luke 17, verses 3 to 4. One more time. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times a day, and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. It is conditional. 